Welcome back to St. Isidore's Farm uh, on this ongoing Quonset project, uh, episode number three here. And today we're getting ready to start. We've got, a, I've got two weeks off of work for Christmas break. So we're going to try and get as much done in the next two weeks as possible. But uh, today's project is to try and get insulation starting to cut, stuffed in here, uh, starting to get this cut and put up. And we're going to do this. Eight, uh, 16 foot sections. So we've already got the electrical run. We did that uh, this week. So we got in all these 20 amp circuits every 32 inches apart. Can't have enough receptacles in a shop, can you? So we're gonna have these all the way down here. Get uh, this 7 16 OSB up here and up to this section right here. So that's the plan is we're gonna work uh, really fast this afternoon to try and get these sections insulated and get the sheathing up on them. So the reason being so that we can get some of this stuff off of the floor. We've got clamps and tools and boards and all of these other things that I want to try and get out of the way and try and get everything moved. We can pile things up over here once this is done because we won't have to get back to it. And then we'll have, it'll be a little bit more, it'll be easier to get around in here, move around in here. It's raining, so hopefully you can hear this, but this is a good example of why you need to seal and insulate this building is this very reason that's a space heater that was sitting in here and that is the condensation just from being cold and then it got up to about 70 degrees today and really humid so you can see the moisture that's in the building uh, that was underneath there so all the concrete is quite wet what's the process here Isaac uh, we're cutting 22 inch sections okay. for up there All right. along that wall and cut a 22 inch board so that I can lay it on the end and set this right here and just take it off and press down and cut it. Alright, cool. Excellent. Got a pile, I gotta get to work. He's getting ahead of me. We've got all of the insulation up. Isaac did a great job on the assembly line cutting the pieces. So we got that knocked out really fast. Got these staple up, now it's time to cut some OSB. It's the next morning. We finished up last night, got that whole 16 foot section insulated and sheathed. So cold and dreary day, not as cold as some of the folks with uh, homestead channels and videos up north like Pratt Family Homestead been shooting some emails back or uh, comments back and forth with them about the fact up in Michigan that they've got so much snow and that apparently it sometimes doesn't go away all winter. Not the case here, but for us, it's it's chilly, 30, 30 some degrees and dreary. So a perfect day to get back in here and keep working on this. But uh, first thing this morning is got to go in and bring some order to the mess that is everywhere on the floor, tools and everything else. So try and start out the morning by cleaning up before we get going uh, on some of the other parts of this project that will end up in the next video. Before we start the cleanup for the day, which needs to happen so that we can get over here and work, I want to show you what we got done yesterday, uh, last night actually. So we got all of this OSB cut for this 16 foot span up to here. So a four foot section and then two two foot sections. Just ripped these pieces down here, ripped them in down the middle on the table saw, which Thankfully, we're able to use again. Uh, gosh, for the first time in two and a half years, that table saw has sat idle. Having all my priorities straight, hooked up the table saw first, the very first thing. So, if I press this green button, hopefully, 
get to hear the sweet sound not heard in over two years. <laughs> Yes! Oh my gosh, that's awesome. So finally was able to rip something that was great. Uh, so this went up really very nicely, actually. Um, got the, the receptacles, everything cut in. Already using these a, a lot. And uh, so, and then this just screwed in very nicely. So one thing I wanted to show you real quick before uh, we, we do the uh, get to cleaning up uh, is actually is just to talk about so that this is, as I said before in a previous video, a full four foot sheet. I designed everything as best I could based on a dimensional lumber to have as little waste as possible and to be as efficient in terms of cutting and labor as possible. So uh, just a full four foot sheet, left it about a half, five eighths of an inch off of the concrete. So if for any reason there's any water in here, this is up off the ground. It's screwed into the pressure treated plywood. It goes right up to the seam. And then you have a, this is just ripped a four foot sheet right down the middle. So almost 24 inches, but that actually helps to account for the, uh, the angle, the, the angle change and then up another 24 inches right to this piece before the next piece changes. So I wanted to say something a little bit more about that in particular on the other side before we move on. One of the things I didn't do a great job of explaining in a previous video was why we designed these wall sections the way we did. From the concrete to this top plate, well, it's actually the bottom plate of this section, but to the top of this two by four is about 48 and a half inches. So when we run a full sheet of plywood to this joint, it goes and is about a half inch, five eighths of an inch off of the concrete, as I said a second ago. But from here to this joint is 24 inches. Again, just like I showed you in the other video so that we can rip a piece of OSB in half and it goes on there. But when we built these, they're actually built from this joint to this joint. This is one section. I wanted this, the bottom plate of this section, to be part of the lower part of the wall so that when we cut this, we only have to cut this one angle one, one time. This is square at the other end, so again, it saves us time and is just simply more efficient. And then by having the top plate and the bottom plate of the next board come together so that this is 21 inches from the short side of this angle to the square side here is 21 inches. Add to two by fours, we have another three inches. So it's 24 inches from this seam joint to this joint. Perfect. And then again, it's 24 inches and it just keeps repeating. Had we done this, the, the other way that we could have done it would be that this joint, it would have been 24 inches from here to here for one section. But that would have involved ripping an angle on every one of these two by fours, which would have just been wasteful in terms of material and time. This is far more efficient to just run this square and put them together the way we did. So hope that's helpful if anybody's watching this video and thinking about how they might do this uh, to really only have to cut one angle on these two by fours and not have to rip any two by fours and get maximum efficiency to design everything off of a four by eight sheet of sheathing. So the one at the bottom and then rip these and that's the way it goes through the whole thing. So we have minimal waste in the whole project. All right. Time to get cleaning, and then we'll talk about what we're gonna do in uh, what's coming up next on this project. St. Augustine said peace is the tranquility of order. So it was great to get in the shop today, spend some time cleaning up, moving things, and restoring order. One of the things we said in a previous video is that we have a lot of things in the shop, tools and supplies, and we're constantly having to move them out of the way just so that we can keep working. After some time spent cleaning up, the shop is the cleanest it's been, well, at least part of it is, as clean as it's been in a very long time. So we got room to walk over here 
get to the chop saw, other tools, and more importantly, this whole area so that we can get to the back wall, the far wall, and the ceiling. So what's coming up next? We've got to run all of the electrical and the plumbing. So the electrical over here is a little trickier than it was on this wall, because all we did over here was run a, a except run receptacles and, and, a, and another wire that will go into the next section and pick up the receptacles in the other half of the shop on that side. But over here, we've got to run wires up all the way over. We're going to have three-way switches at the garage door and at this door. So for all the lighting, all of the lighting is going to be connected to those switches. So got to do that. That's a little tricky to get that up. Uh, <laughs> Figure that out to get it up and over and back, considering there's no framing over there, but we have to do it before we can put the insulation and sheathing up here. Want to put some receptacles up in the ceiling so that we can plug in the whole shop air filter and also have some places where we can have drop down extension cords for working in the center, especially at a, a table, a shop table. And want to have a ceiling fan up there possibly as well. And then on the far side, things are a little different over there because of the plumbing and things we were looking at putting in a, an electric on-demand water heater. So we have to figure that out, what we're going to do with that and where it's going to go as well as the plumbing. And there's some things like the refrigerator going over there. So there's a little bit to figure out uh, on that. With the plumbing itself, That'll probably be a whole separate video once we get into it, which is part of what we did today. It wasn't actually spent all in here. It was doing some things just outside, which if you follow us on Instagram, you'll see the picture of the exciting discovery uh, that we was out there that was really important for this project. That's it uh, for right now. So can't wait to get back in here tomorrow. Super excited about this, this project. Go to bed every night, excited about it and wake up ready to get out here and start working, try and get as much done as we can in the, these two weeks. We'll get videos made as, as often as possible and uploaded quickly for those of you that are following along with it. It's Christmas week. So, uh, other things are going on as well. I hope everybody is having a blessed time in anticipation of celebrations on Sunday. And to new subscribers, thank you very much as well. Also, thanks to folks who comment on the videos. Really enjoy answering questions and having a dialogue with viewers. So if you're interested, please leave comments. I think that's it. I'm going to head in and uh, we'll get back out here tomorrow. So thank you again for watching the video, following along with this series, and until the next video, God bless.